200 years ago, the Netherlands was occupied by Napoleon, and then Napoleon was defeated, and King William I, who was in exile, who was, he was not a king before, he was just a prince, he returned to the Netherlands, he landed with his party, and he said, right, I'm going to be king of the Netherlands. He founded the monarchy, and we've been a kingdom ever since. Yeah, 200 years, a big celebration, especially since 2013 was also the year that we got a new king, William Alexander. My name is Philip Droga, I'm a journalist based in Amsterdam. I, I write extensively about the Dutch royal family and written a couple of books about them. Because the monarchy is 200 years old, we are going to take you on a royal tour of the Netherlands. We're going to show you some of the palaces where the, the kings and queens work and, and live. We're going to take you to one of the most beautiful hotels in this country where the kings of old used to meet their mistresses. We're going to take you to Amsterdam where on the birthday of the king there's going to be a huge celebration. Uh, that happens every year, it's one of the great traditions of this country. And we're going to try to give you an impression what it is like to have a monarchy. This is, this is actually the office of the present king. At this time the king is there, you can see because the royal standard is flying, so he is he's hard at work at this moment, uh, maybe signing laws, because that's one of the things that he has to do as, uh, as head of state. Without his signature they don't, they don't have any power, they're not laws at all, but the laws are made in parliament about two kilometers from here. A lot of people think that the king is a very powerful figure, that he runs the country on a daily basis. Well, that is not the fact. What he does, he is a figurehead. He's the symbol of, of the Netherlands. He is somebody who, um, who, who binds the country together. From a very young age onward, people in this country learn to have a great deal of respect for the royal family. We're standing in front of what looks like an ordinary bakery. It is an ordinary bakery, but it is a bakery that supplies the royal family. The palace is just around the corner, so that's why they come here and, and get their bread and uh, they have to eat as well. I asked him if it is true that William Alexander, the, the present king, when he was still a prince, that he came here, but it was before his time, so uh, he, he didn't know. But I, I can tell you from a reliable source that he did, especially after a night on the town. He, love to come here in the morning and get some sandwiches, maybe a croissant. We're at Soestijk Palace. It was built in the early 17th century, originally by the mayor of Amsterdam, but soon it was purchased by the Orange family, who would later become the royal family of the Netherlands. And on and off through the last couple of centuries, they've, they've lived here. Juliana and Bernard moved in here um, really just before the Second World War. Juliana was the fifth monarch of the Netherlands. She was a queen at that time when she moved in here. She was still a princess. She would become queen after the Second World War. When Juliana and Bernard died, there was really a big, one big question. What are we going to do with this huge place? Luckily, a lot of people uh, expressed an interest in seeing it. So they, they thought we're going to open it for the public, which they did. And people have been coming ever since. I brought you to uh, what is called the White Dining Room, which is the room um, most of what you see here was, uh, was made in the, in the 19th century. You could use a room like this obviously for different uh, kinds of, of dinner parties. You could have very formal parties. You could have, for instance, if one of your daughters gets engaged or one of your sons, you could have an engagement dinner here. You could have heads of state over. And for the price of an, of an admission ticket, you can actually be here and, and get that feeling what it must have been like when kings uh, and queens and, and, and emperors were really powerful. We were in the office of Prince Bernard, who was the husband of Queen Juliana, and uh, his, his title was Prince, but in, in foreign countries they often thought that he was the king of the Netherlands because he was quite a figure in his own right. It's mostly empty now, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an exhibition, so you can see some pictures of, of the prince who deceased, uh, who died in 2004. One particular detail that I would like to share with you is the prince was uh, um, a lover of fast cars and he had a number of very close shaves, he had a, a number of accidents in his life. One in particular in 1937 nearly cost him his life, he broke his neck. And you can actually see he hung up the steering wheel of this particular car, a Ford, a very fast car. Uh, he hung it up on this wall and the impression, or rather the, uh, the, the, the discoloration of the wallpaper, still shows you where the steering wheel was, was located on his wall. So he kept it also as a momentum to uh, remind him that uh, he had a very close shave with death at that time.
I took you to Hashtem Boss, literally house in the woods. This is the residence of the former queen, Beatrix. Uh, she still lives there. The big question is how long will she stay here? Um, she's probably going to move pretty soon to a new house, that she, a new palace that, uh, uh, that she used to live in, which is about 100 kilometers from The Hague. And then this will probably be the residence of our new king, Willem-Alexander. He's probably going to live here with his family because this is the royal residence. This is where you live when you are the head of state. The shot that our cameraman is taking right now, this is actually a famous shot because this is usually where the press gathers when we get a new cabinet in this country, a new government. And what happens is they go to, well, formerly the queen and the future the king, and they have a traditional portrait that they take on these stairs that you see over there, one that we've had quite a number of uh, times in the past couple of years because we've had quite a number of cabinets. Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands. The king lives in The Hague, but there's something very royal about Amsterdam as well. It's because the, 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 the king's birthday is going to be celebrated in a really big way. It's one of the main events in Amsterdam of the year. One of the best parties ever in the world. It's, you can only compare it maybe to the carnival in Rio. Most major cities will have a smaller version of what is happening in Amsterdam, but if you come to, to the Netherlands for this particular celebration, you've got to go to Amsterdam. The king is going to go on a, on a couple of visits and it's not certain whether he will come to Amsterdam. His mother once did. She went right into the heart of the festivities here, not very far from her actually, and she joined in, in with the, uh, with the uh, revelers in Amsterdam. And there's actually a very famous scene where somebody says, hey, it's your birthday, and he kisses her on the cheek. I took you to, uh, to, to a really special place um, to end our royal tour through uh, the Netherlands. This is Hotel des Andes, a five-star hotel, a classic hotel, one of the uh, few grand hotels that we have in this country. And a very royal hotel, lots of royalty has stayed here. Um, kings of, of Denmark, Sweden, uh, the Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. Uh, so it's really a royal place and if you really want to get a feel for what it's like to, to be royalty, this is the place to be. There is a story that it, it was one of the places where one of the kings, William III, liked to uh, receive, shall we put it, his mistresses, that he entertained ladies here. What happens exactly is, is unclear, but um, there are a number of ways out of this hotel that are, uh, let's say, discreet. That's more than a century ago. It's got nothing to do with the mother of the royal family, no. So we've come to the end of, of our royal tour through the Netherlands. I hope to have given you an idea what it is like to, uh, to live in a monarchy. Um, we've come to a beautiful place to, to end this little tour and uh, to the king. <laughs>